Alright, welcome one and all. This is the first game of the day for the Zotec Monthly Finals. I am Rifkin, of course. Joining me today is the lovely Zombie Grub. Say hello. What's up, guys? <laughs> it's spotted here in the upper left corner of the map. Starting our day off strong with a Terran player. It is none other than Alien Invasion's Revenge. And in the bottom right, it's going to be the Yellow Protoss, Arthur, currently teamless. Yeah, a little sad story behind that, because... It was like the same day we were casting, like, it, it was like not even before casting, it was like three games in, he was like, removed from Western Wolves, so I don't know the full details of it, but it's a really sad story, because he is not a guy who's too happy with it, but I want to note, the same week, that same day, that same weekend, rather, where he was uh, removed and all sad about it, he actually beat Stardust in the finals. Oh, alright, that's, that's not, awesome. Not too emotionally scarred by the events. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently not. He's still pretty, pretty damn good. Um, that would have been a PvP, right? Yep. That would, uh, that would have been a really interesting PvP to watch. But all right, so we're gonna see PvT, however, and unfortunately, Arthur. I've casted a bit of him, especially when he was on Western Wolves, but I'm not sure what his best or worst matchup is. Honestly, I would say his PvZ, just from an observing point of view, he might not feel the same way, of course. But I think his yeah. PvZ is probably his best. PvT right now is kind of in this really awkwardly awesome spot where if you let, like, if a Terran player lets the Protoss get to the late game unaffected, like, no harass, no drops, nothing, a Protoss player will typically run over the Terran player. But if the Terran player, like, if Revenge does, like, little drops here and there, tries to do Hellion run buys, whatever his form of harassment is, as long as you keep Arthur kind of from snowballing rather quickly, we're going to have a pretty awesome and a pretty even matchup. Mm. All right. Well... See, uh, Scout does go out for Arthur as well at for Revenge. He's just going to be doing typical two guys in gas. He's going to get Militia core, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but something about this map. <laughs> I mean, it's really typical stuff. I it mean, is. It really is. I just... could go into it more detail, but uh, the thing is about this map, you know, uh, as the first map, I don't like it in the mid game and late game for Protoss. You know, there's there's chokes, there I mean they're on ramps, there's a good Del Naga position, so facing a Protoss kinda sucks. But if you're allowed to put on the pressure if Arthur decides to go for a third Nexus, it is like impossible to hold. If Revenge plays it out well by multitasking and dropping a lot, like you were mentioning, you know, drops in the main, then goes to the third, to split up your army perfectly is almost impossible. So that's really what I hope to see from Revenge and then some really excellent defense from Arthur. Yeah, you know, I feel like the one thing that really prevails in this matchup for the Protoss player, not the Terran player, is the upgrades. Like, when you've got the double forge and you're chronoing out both, there's no Terran player in the world who likes engaging 3-3 three, three Zealots. There's just no <laughs> situation where that's preferable. <laughs> Definitely not. Um... And that is true, like the upgrades really play a key point, and with that Mothership Core we have been seeing a lot more double forge, so definitely could be the case. Revenge Scout will First be denied blood. right here, did not see a Nexus or anything go down. Uh, so far we do have just a Stalker, he's going to be cutting out another Stalker, be placing some pressure on the front. No Bunker yet, Bunker not going to go down? No, he's actually just not going for Bunkers. With the Reactor on the Barracks, however, uh, unless they're going to do something that was meant to punish this, you don't usually get punished. Well, the one thing that worries me here, too, is even with this minute amount of poking coming out, I mean, these four Marines, hell, there'll be six Marines by the time the Stalkers are across the field, eight Marines even, it's still hard to deal with that Mothership Core and those Stalkers. I mean, uh. they're not exactly going to kill you quickly, but hold the phone. Arthur throwing down this very aggressive pylon without gateways behind this. I wonder if he's trying to fake the aggression right now and just mind game our, uh, revenge out. Oh, oh we're going to lose that Mothership Core, though. Revenge is not faked at all. He just ran down there, and I do not think Arthur was expecting that, so no. that's really unfortunate. Time warp thrown down as well. He's still got that Mothership Core, albeit just barely, but he's still got it in the end. Stalker goes down as well, and Arthur's got to be sitting here going, wait, what? <laughs> How did this happen? <laughs> yeah, um... Gosh, that was a really bold move by Revenge, but it was the perfect one. You know, Arthur had a sentry rallied across the map. There it is, just chugging along. He wanted to actually, you know, box in his Terran opponent just on one gate while he expanded behind it. That would have been absolutely terrible for Revenge. But luckily, Revenge, being super aggressive, just completely takes this aggression apart. And there's no way this sentry will survive um, or get the force field that he wants to off, rather. And still, Arthur's trying to make this work. Yeah, we're another stock. He's got that widow mine. He's got to be very careful. Of course, it shoots. It one shots any Protoss ground unit, except for like the Immortals. So it kind of sucks to have to deal with. 
Yeah, that's that's a really interesting opener by Arthur, to be honest. I haven't seen it. I've seen aggressive openers because we do, you know, Terrans don't actually have that much in the way of units in the beginning, so you can definitely get away with it. But just like that, you know, off one gateway and a proxy pylon at mm. like six or six minutes, um, you know, that's not something I've seen too often. But that drop is seen. Of course, you can kind of nowadays just assume it's going to be a wood of mine drop, but seeing it's also nice. Yeah, well, the rubble was already started before this came out, so Arthur should have detection out. But man, there's. Protoss, you know what, there's not a lot that as a Terran player I feel sorry for them for, but one of those things is certainly the fact that they have a rough time getting detection out, and Widow Mines can cause way more damage than they really should. But mm. look at the position of these Stalkers, look at the Sentry in the main, this is so great, Revenge is going to have a hard time getting in here, he will get in here, but we'll see what damage he can actually do. Oh, with this warping, Ooh. he's not getting in there at all, yeah. So. Yeah, the boost wore off just a little bit too soon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you always want to have that boost to go in, you know, right, you know, don't want to wearing off as soon as you get there, that's just, uh... Unfortunate when that happens, but this drop so far has not done anything and you know besides well, not doing any damage It's supposed to scout and as you can see there's Dark Shrine going down So he would love that scout well one key thing here too while it's not actively doing damage It is keeping Arthur at home and keeping him from pushing across the field and putting pressure at the natural which as we see here It's only just got the bunk up. So while it's not directly doing a ton of damage It's keeping Arthur at home, which I think is a really good thing to have right now on the field for revenge not Protoss in his base <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Revenge is sending a few marines down. He'll want to attack the front and then, uh, you know, try and draw some units away so the wood mines in back will do something. Not sure what he's doing here. It looks just scouting for proxy pylons, maybe? Uh, or maybe getting rid of his... I don't know. <laughs> I think it's kind of one of those things like, okay, the drop's not happening. What else can I make work? Well, there's two stalkers for free oh, over here yeah. on the side of the field. Why the hell not? Yeah, but I forgot that about the that Dark Shrine needs to get scattered because the Warp Prism is coming out next, and if he warp starts warping DTs in the main, that's going to be very difficult for Revenge to deal with. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, we got the yeah, factory exactly. landing. I just want to point that out, too. Not just scouting, but landing. Is he going to start pumping Widow Mines in the main? That would be a really bold move. I've seen this done. I mean, it survives. If it's scouted, you just lift it up again, right? I mean, there's no way we're going to take it down for a very long time. So well, I'm thinking this might act as like the retard magnet to draw the stock yeah. away so that the medevac can boost in. Uh, I think Arthur is too aware of this, though. As you can see, he's not actually going to attack the factory with all of his units just warping Ooh. in a few to make sure that Widomine doesn't get off. Oh, this one oh my gonna burrow. Arthur's got a spread. Look at that spread, though. Only, you know what? That could have been much worse. Some really nice control with his probes there, I must say. Yeah. Meanwhile, I just I was expecting well, just Marines at the front as well. Yeah, but the put on overcharge, of course, will drive this off. Lifts four up to go back to the main, but the cannon is down, so he's kind of limited on where he can go. But this is definitely throwing Arthur like in a bit of chaos. We see probes coming back, going, coming, like. Uh, the war prism in the main, however, is there. It's warping in 3 DTs. Revenge does see this. He has missile turrets up. Oh, uh, no. I believe That's he scouted the dark it. shrine and he immediately put it. down. He needs to lift that. There's no way he's saving that. Yeah, why isn't he lifting it? Just press that L button, buddy. There, there we, we go. go. Panic ensues. Now, of course, the speed on the war prism is really irritating to deal with nowadays. Even Vikings can't keep up with them, so you have to really be on the ball with knowing where that war prism is at all times. Mm. Yeah, that's very true. Um, getting one Viking is still pretty useful, especially if you just put it in the main spots that they would come in. But as you can see, he's just going with the medevac production again. So one DT at a time, it's annoying. You spend all your scans that are saving up and not having that mule economy that you really, really love to have. So, you know, Arthur didn't do too much damage with it, but it's really indirect damage that you wanted. Yeah, I mean, baiting out too, almost getting the starport, and it wasn't even a high risk scenario. It's a couple DTs, he even got one of them out alive with the warp prism, so he can go back in for more later. Exactly, so uh, really both players have been just like little tiny punches, but no Ooh. real, you know, slugfest yet. Check this, Revenge got an SCV sitting here scouting to see if the warp prism is still hanging about, just barely missed. Oh, he did get the pylon on the way back with that scout, so he knows it's there, turns around to go take it out. Yeah, you don't want to attack with all your army and then have a DT go into your natural. It just is not a good feeling, so the better uh, better for this. The War Prism, it's gone home, it's gone home. All right. There it goes, it goes back to the main. You want to at least, you know, fake the aggression with that War Prism, have them constantly on their toes so that their push is a little distracted. It's not nearly as powerful as it could be. And uh, speaking of that push, it is coming, and nothing is really ready for Arthur. He has some immortals and some sentries, so there's got to be good force fields. Yeah, I mean, the supply is definitely not in the favor of Arthur, but he's got the army here. I feel with an overcharge, especially, he could take this fight, but it's got to be done precisely and perfectly. 
Yeah, actually the overcharge itself is enough for Revenge to just walk away from that fight, so Colossus will be in time for the next battle. Factory is still here, by the way. It's, well, uh, it was lifted off and retreated. It just landed again recently, but trying to get that <laughs> Widow Mine off, Zealots are going to kind of shut that down. Yeah, I would love for him to actually just take that back home, not just lose it, uh, especially as you will want a second starport eventually, but also because Hellian Hellbats are still okay. You know, you still kind of want them to uh, an addition into your army, but I guess Revenge does not. Yeah, even on upgraded, they could be a big asset. Warp Prism is picked off there on the left side of the map. Nice control of that Viking. That really should not have happened because Warp Prisms outrun Vikings, but okay. Big SCV pull here out of Revenge. Holy yeah. moly, how did I miss this? Yeah, well, he's on he's five barracks, broke. no third command center. He just wants to end it right here, and with no storm, he very well could. Yeah, there's only one Colossus. It's going to take a while to chew through these SCVs. Focusing down that Nexus, no more cannon on the overcharge. Oh, he's doing sword trying to catch the Colossus. Does get the Colossus, it falls, but some nice force fields. Revenge, I mean, sorry, uh, Arthur's got to back away from these force fields, though, and start using that range to his advantage. Uh, but the Nexus still falls nonetheless. Yeah, but most of the army of Revenge also fell, and Arthur still has a good chunk, does pull back those zealots, cannot actually go forward and attack, and I think that was a mistake, needs to wait it's, for the Colossus, which just yeah. now have thermal range, didn't have it before. And this is really weird to consider, this is no natural base versus low uh, saturation for our, our Revenge because he pulled so many workers, so both players, as we can see from the income tab, kind of on even footing for the time being, as weird as that is to consider. <laughs> Yeah, um, and of course, with that Dark Shrine always in the back of Avengers' mind, he needs to be very careful about how he uses mules, so... Ooh. But Arthur's got to stop poking like this. Losing Stalkers to Marauders, they do get shredded. The one Colossus is not that scared for this Terran army. Yeah, it really is, especially when he's just kiting and getting rid of most of the buffer, which are the Zealots. That's always very nice to do. It's now just Stalkers and Colossus, which just one melts the Marauder heavy. It. Yeah, exactly, and this this is very, you know, it's rather Marauder heavy, so they can definitely take a lot of swipes from that Colossus and still live, but, but Revenge just finally back off. Yeah, he's getting whittled down pretty hardcore here. His army supply is definitely starting to fail a little bit. Upgrades-wise, though, this is still, believe it or not, 1-1 one, one for both players at this uh, 17 minutes <laughs> in the game. But this oh. is Revenge, of course, staying dedicated to this. He's still not looking to expand. His goal, as stated earlier by Zombie Grub, is to try and end the game as soon as possible. Yeah, I mean, he is starting to reproduce some SCVs, so he says, okay, I took out a Nexus, this is enough to awkwardly kind of be an even game, but... Oh, Ooh, this is nice force really fields. Yeah, Colossus. Nice. Oh, Colossus will live to see another day. The Vikings doing what they can. Not quite enough. Big blink forward trying to catch that Viking, but... Man, revenge on the back foot right now. He's trying to get more units rallied across the field. His army on the ground, though, has so dwindled so much. It has, but it's still it's still a good composition to go with Arthur has. You know, usually yeah. the Terran you want to be up by 20 supply, um, but with the composition that they both have, it's actually okay for both players. I mean, Arthur I don't think should push out, but Revenge can still be that Terran that's constantly around the map, just not taking Ooh. any big engagements. One really big point to uh, make here is the fact that these medevacs are all dry right now, so each of these stims is going to be a little bit more difficult to reel back from. Yeah, that's that's very true. Um, you know, every sim's now really gonna hurt. He's reproducing those starports. He doesn't have enough money to really build a second one. That's really what he would like. But he wants to push in again. And so far, no third base means you know is telling me that he wants to pull SCVs again. Pulling SCVs again would be certainly risky. The clock is ticking though. When that Nexus gets back up and running, Arthur's income is just gonna skyrocket. But a yeah, nice exactly. pick off there with the Vikings. Get some mothership core. Yeah, it's, uh, it's always nice. The Viking count is up to five against two Colossus, and one's almost dead already, so that's actually pretty okay. The Zealots, though, with good force fields that Arthur has shown us, can definitely still do a lot of damage. Yeah, Guardian Shield going to be a huge asset to this as well. Those low upgrades, man, the Guardian Shield's that much more effective. Yeah, and here the SCV pool once again. He's going to be down to like 12 after this one, oh, so gosh. he needs to actually just kill Arthur here, not just take out the Nexus and back off again. Yeah, mules are cool, and they're good, but not that good. <laughs> but okay, big force field is going to keep the SCVs back. The army's totally clustered, but it gives the Vikings room to get in there and get some volleys off. Both players backing away for the moment. More force seals will most likely go down, but you know what? Like the, the sad thing is, Revenge can't drop behind this. He has to go all all at once. It's all or nothing for him at this point. Rain's trying to sneak yeah. around the side. Gets one. Of, oh no, the Glasses lives with 20 health left on it. And with the army stuck behind force fields, this might be it, Zombie Grub. I think it is. Those are That was beautiful control by Arthur, honestly. Revenge is not able to push up that ramp. That army is oh, so small fields. right now. This force oh, field control has been awesome at Arthur. Not yeah. spending more than four. No spams, no wasted energy. Everything here is so precise, from both players even. Yeah, um, 
Jeez, revenge going up into that ramp the first time. All right, yeah, I understand your, your your problem there, but going up again, you yeah. just have given up and tried to go some other way. But unfortunately, Arthur had like the perfect amount of sentry energy. Honestly, like enough for two force fields at the ramp, and he was golden. Like without those sentries, he uh, he might be dead. You know what I call this game, Zombie Grub? What? A really awesome first game of the day. <laughs> That's very true. I think Arthur. You know, really, it's just impressing me. Like, I want to see who I want to be impressed with as this tournament goes on. And so far, it's Arthur. I mean, I know it's the first game, but those force fields, like, having the force fields, too. Like, some Protoss, you see, like, oh, I'm in a bad position. Let me just not warp in sentries. No. Arthur's like, no, force fields too good. I got it. Yeah, I certainly feel that a lot of Protoss players, like, even the very most high-quality ones, they sort of start, they stop getting the sentries when it comes to the late game. But proven here, they can be very effective as long as used correctly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I can't believe Revenge is trying to go at it again. He's currently down by 30 yeah, supplies. This is, yeah, this is that clock I was talking about, guys. As we see here, like, Arthur is just skyrocketing with the income. His main is mined out, but so is Revenge's, essentially. Both players still kind of on that really low situation of income, but we got 51 probes to the 27 SCVs on the field. So, I mean, it's a little too much saturation for one base, of course, but this allows Arthur to start looking towards expanding if he needs to behind this, but he's not able to afford that Nexus. So, deceptively... Not nearly as far ahead as he otherwise would have been, say, two minutes ago. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing about this map, like I was pointing out, is that getting the third is very difficult. So I wouldn't be surprised if Arthur just does not get the third um, until he's, like, maxed or something. Just to be ultra careful that he doesn't keep wasting 400 minerals as Revenge keeps on sniping. You know, that's one way he could come back, I guess. You know, with that all, all or nothing sort of push kind of having succeeded, or succeeded to the side for now... I would love to see Revenge start going for some drops. Nothing crazy that dedicates them, but like, you know, four Marauders in the main, start picking off pylons, limit yeah. the warp ins. I mean, sitting back, pulling in the middle of the field, he's never going to catch up with supply. And a Dark Templar here, even going to force a scan, <laughs> which he can't afford because he needs all the mules of the world right now. So we see him just exactly. walking away from it. A Dark Shrine is the, like, the best maneuver you can do, honestly, against someone who's pulled SCVs. Yeah. They're, they're muling hard, and as you can see, he has no energy. He's, uh, he has like 10 seconds until another energy comes along. Just and the big thing too is, even if Revenge is looking to go for a third behind this, he can't. This Dark Templar has been patrolling around here for the last like 11 minutes. <laughs> yeah, um, that's something you would do. You usually lift off your main, but he now, has, now have a scan, but Arthur is even engaged. Of course, he's a little slower up there. So oh, as, he's if, just... as if Revenge could hear you. He lifts up the main as you say that. I just want to oh. find that other. <laughs> well, you know, pretty good. Magic. Uh, yeah, magic. Um, <laughs> anyways. He's going to be looking to expand over here, however, I guess he tried before or something, and the DT was blocking his way, like you said, but this just means that the distance between Arthur attacking is is shorter. Like, Revenge has a spot oh, where no. he needs to defend, and it's going to be super difficult. Arthur's got three Colossus, which are scary. Oh. He's hallucinating two more, but there's also Archons in the mix now with no ghosts on the field. There's no easy way to deal with Archons. Even with the mass bio ball, they soak so much damage. Exactly. Um, you know, luckily Revenge has gotten a lot more Marines, so the DPS is still pretty good. You gotta make sure the Zealots get four through. Man, he's focusing down the hallucinations of the zombie grab. I really want to point that out as a big point. There's a lot of Vikings here, but they took out no real units. Yeah, it was, uh, that was nicely done by Arthur. I think pulling back was the exact correct decision. Just going up that ramp against Revenge. Still pretty scary army was not the best idea. All he has to do is wait. I mean, he gets that third, which is what he should be doing, and then wait until Storm. Like, Revenge has no counter to that. Yeah, both players on even army supply right now pretty much. Big bio ball though here getting soaked a lot of that damage. Vikings are pretty much taken out at this point, so the Colossus are free to start moving forward, but the bio's sitting in, trying to just push their way, brute force on top of the Colossus. More warpings oh. coming, but Revenge, I think, is just winning a little too fast. One hallucination, one real Colossus remaining. Stalker's gonna finish this up, and Revenge, guys, I think is gonna be out finally. Yeah, I think that's it. Now that his army is dead, uh, there's no coming back mules. Uh, mules are not, so Arthur will be taking this first game. GG is called. Nice, nice first game.